Okay, this video is for all you backyard mechanics out there. Now, if you're a backyard mechanic, you probably had the task to find that noise coming from your car. That noise that wasn't normal, indicating something was wrong. Now, if you were experienced, you probably would recognize some of the noises coming from your car. Like that whine coming from the rear of the car could indicate like a wheel bearing, or a, or a differential, a worn differential, or an axle bearing, or that clunk could be a motor mount, something in the suspension, or a squeak, which can indicate a ball joint, a water pump, a uh, dry universal joint, or even your brake pads. And then in your engine compartment, you could hear like ticking noises, like say a sticky lifter. A lot of these noises you would recognize. And some of the techniques used to find the problem could be something like this stethoscope, where you could probe certain areas where you suspect the noise is coming from, or something as simple as a rubber hose, about three or four feet long, where you could scan around at areas where you think the noise is coming from, and on the other end, put it up to your ear, and you got to hear the vibration, or even a screwdriver, where you could probe around with a screwdriver and put your ear up to the handle, and you could actually hear hear the noise. Other techniques is taken off the drive belts, like say uh, from your engine, say the drive belt off your alternator for alternator noise or your water pump or your air conditioning compressor. But sometimes there's that noise you just can't find and it's usually intermittent and while you're driving. It might be when you take off from a stop or stop hard or, or turn left or right hard. Sometimes you just can't, can't find that noise. So what do you do? So I had the same problem. I just couldn't find that noise coming from my car. So I decided to build this little device here. This is a little FM radio transmitter and it transmits on the FM broadcast band which is 88 to 108 megahertz which you can receive on your car FM radio. So what you do, you plant this in certain areas of your vehicle on your car and then you drive around and you listen for the noise and you could zero in on, on the defect as the noise will get louder as you get closer to the defect and you could zero in and find out exactly where the noise is coming from. Now if you Google FM radio transmitter you'll, you'll find a lot of circuits online where they have a little microphone connected to a circuit board where they could transmit their voice over to the FM radio and if you notice on this box there is there is no microphone because if you had a microphone hooked up to this device and you planted it on your car, the road noise and the air rushing by would be horrendous and it would actually block the vibrations that were made by the noise coming from your car that you're trying to, to, to detect. So this works on a little bit different principle and I'll show you how that works. Okay, here's the inside of my little FM radio transmitter. Now normally you would have a microphone and a little preamp feeding this circuit which would frequency modulate this oscillator and transmit the signals to an FM radio receiver. But in my case, I do not have any microphone here. So the way I frequency modulate this device is through this little coil you see here, this little coil of wire. Now this coil is an inductor and this little trimmer capacitor is a capacitor makes up an LC circuit which determines the frequency of this transmitter. Now if you vary the frequency by compressing the spring or spreading it out you could you could vary the frequency so when a vibration happens which hits the box the coil will vibrate and actually modulate the, the transmitter so you would hear the vibrations through the mo movement of that little coil which is actually acting like a spring so that's the way that I modulate the vibrations uh, onto the onto the radio transmitter So I'm going to demonstrate how this works. So I have a little 9 volt battery here that powers the circuit. And I got my stereo on. Right now I'll turn it up. It's on an unused portion of the band so you can just you can hear noise. So now when I hook up the battery, now it is transmitting. And you can hear any vibration into the spring will cause
cause the transmitter to frequency modulate, which you would hear in the receiver. So any vibration happening will be transferred to the receiver. Okay, here's the circuit for a little FM transmitter. Now this circuit runs on 9 volts, as you can see there, which is fed through a 5 microhenry choke to the main circuit. Now the heart of the circuit is a dual gate end channel MOSFET, an ECG222, which has two gates. Gate number 2 is fed a, a bias voltage from the voltage divider with a 2.2 meg and a 1 meg resistor. And that's where you would feed in an AC signal from a microphone if you wanted to have this as a little FM microphone uh, transmitter. But in my case there's no microphone. So it's just a straight DC bias into gate 2. Gate 1 gets feedback from the tank circuit from L1 and the little trimmer capacitor through a 22 pica picofarads capacitor to the gate. And that's what causes the oscillation of this, of this um, transmitter from 88 to 108 which is tunable through the, through the little trimmer cap. Now the, the, the coil, L1, is this coil here. It's a little spring that vibrates, which frequency, which frequency modulates the transmitter. And that coil, L1, is five turns of number 24 solid wire wound around a pencil. And then you just solder it onto the board. Now if you notice on the board, I have epoxied the board to the case, to the enclosure, so it won't vibrate, but the only thing that could vibrate is the spring. I didn't put any epoxy in the spring, so that's free to vibrate to, to frequency modulate this little transmitter. Now, sometimes it's uh, hard to get these dual gate and channel MOSFET transistors, so if you Google anything, any FM transmitter online, you could basically use that circuit and just, just disconnect the microphone, you'll get the same results. Um, I've used uh, dual gate and in, in channel MOSFETs in a lot of my circuits, but uh, they seem to be uh, they seem to be getting obsolete. They're not making them like they used to. So, so an alternate way would would be to use just another FM microphone circuit. So that's basically the circuit there. It's very simple. You just mount it on into an enclosure, epoxy it down so it doesn't move around, and you just leave your coil free to vibrate. So here's the completed project with a 9 volt battery inserted in the enclosure and I've used foam on either side to keep the battery from actually moving around. Keeps it tight, it puts a little bit of comp compression on there. So all you do is just put on the cap and put in the four screws and away you go.